The world today is undergoing profound transformation unseen in a century, amid which the trend of multipolarity and economic globalization is experiencing a sea change, and countries are becoming increasingly intertwined, interdependent, and interconnected. To cope with COVID-19, restart the economy, and safeguard World stability. The international community has made strenuous efforts. Political parties have also shown a strong sense of responsibility by making active exploration. While in some places, wars and conflicts are still raging, famine and diseases remain prevalent. Estrangement and confrontation grow even deeper. The call for a better life from all peoples is becoming stronger. Today, humanity is once again at a historic crossroads. It is about hostile confrontation or mutual respect, closeness or openness, decoupling or cooperation, zero-sum game or win-win results. The choice is in our hands and the responsibility falls on our shoulders. Human race is an integral community and the planet Earth its homeland. In the face of common challenges, no person or country can tackle alone. The only way out is to work together in harmony with one accord. Political parties, as an important force behind human progress, need to set the right course forward and shoulder their historic responsibility to ensure the people's well-being and human progress. In my view, political parties need to work even harder on the following. First, we need to shoulder the responsibility to steer the course by seizing and shaping the shared future for mankind. People aspire to affluence and contentment. They yearn for fairness and justice. Great times call for grand architecture, and grand architecture for calls for great vision. Viewed from the perspective of my country first, the world is a crammed and crowded place full of competition. Viewed from the perspective of a global community with a shared future, the world is a vast and broad place full of cooperation opportunities. We need to heed the voices of the people, follow the trend of the times, and strengthen coordination and cooperation. By doing so, the interests of the people of one country will be kept in line with those of all others, and humanity will move forward towards a shared future. Second, we need to shoulder the responsibility to build consensus by upholding and promoting the common values of humanity. Despite differences among countries in history, culture, institution, and level of development, the people aspire to the common values of humanity for peace, development, equality, justice, democracy, and freedom. With a strong sense of responsibility for the future of mankind, we need to champion the common values of humanity, understand with an open mind the values of different civilizations, and respect other people's explorations to turn values into reality. By doing so, the common values of humanity will be translated into the practice of individual countries to serve the interests of their own people in a concrete and realistic way. Third, we need to shoulder the responsibility to promote development by bringing greater benefits to all peoples in a fairer manner. Development pose the key to the people's well-being. On the road to the well-being of mankind, no country or nation should be left behind. All countries and nations are equally entitled to development opportunities and rise to development. 
We need to face squarely up to major problems such as wealth gap and development divide, with particular attention given to underdeveloped countries and regions and impoverished people so that hope prevails in every corner of the world. As a nation, Chinese philosopher observed that those who only seek comfort for themselves will ultimately be rejected, and those who sacrifice their own interests for the success of others will be supported. Development is the right of all countries, rather than the privilege of the few. We need to enable all countries to step up development cooperation, which is shared by all. We need to bring greater equality, higher efficiency, and stronger synergy to global development, and jointly oppose the practice of seeking technology blockade, technology divide, and decoupling. I believe that, in a final analysis, any political manipulation for the purpose of sabotaging the development of other countries and undercutting the livelihood of other peoples will receive little support and prove to be futile. Fourth, we need to shoulder the responsibility to enhance cooperation by working together to address global risks and challenges. In the face of the ongoing COVID-19, we need to continue with a science-based response approach and advocate solidarity and cooperation so as to close the immunization gap. We must approach the practice of politicizing the pandemic or labeling the virus. We need to work together to build a community, a global community of health for all. In the face of terrorism and other common enemies of mankind, we need to pursue security and stability through cooperation so as to tighten the security fences together. In the face of the fertile ecological environment, we need to respect Mother Nature, follow her laws, and protect her so as to build a, bu a green homeland together. In the face of the severe challenges to human existence and development brought about by climate change, we need to be brave enough to take responsibilities to and work as one to find a way of harmonious coexistence between man and nature. Fifth, we need to shoulder the responsibility to improve governance by enhancing our capacity to ensure people's well-being. There are different pathways towards well-being. People of all countries are entitled to choose their own development paths and institutional models. This in itself is what well-being entails. Democracy is the right of all peoples, rather than an exclusive privilege of the few. There are multiple ways and means to realize democracy instead of a single stereotype. The judgment on whether a country is democratic or not should be made by their own people, not by the handful of others. To advance political democracy in a way that suits the national conditions of a country, we need to strengthen exchanges and mutual learning, improve mechanisms for communication, be fully aware of the public opinion, establish well-fledged institutions, and enhance our governance capacity. By doing so, our capacity and efficacy to ensure the people's well-being will be elevated continuously.